Hi everybody, my name is Michelle Garcia and today I'm going to be talking about a model of giftedness that I learned about that I want to elaborate on. However, I kind of want to mesh two together because I feel like one is important with the other. Um, but I'm going to go over the main one I'm talking about today and that is Joseph Renzulli's uh, triad of giftedness. Um, and to me, that one was the one that most stood out to me out of all the theories and models um, because I just thought it just made a whole lot of sense. Um, but then when I read about another one, I said, wow, these kind of go hand in hand together in my opinion. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start talking about Renzulli's child model of giftedness. Um, and I drew a, um, a diagram to kind of help um, explain it as I go along. Um, and uh, this is what the model looks like. Um, and there's three different components to um, what somebody would consider someone as gifted. Um, and all of them go hand in hand. You have to have all three components to be considered gifted. Um, and when I read about it, it was very general. Um, there weren't a whole lot of studies done with it, so I think that's something that could be um, improved upon um, and tested on different types of uh, groups of people, ages, races, uh, cultural backgrounds. Um, but this basis and platform for giftedness, I felt like made 100% uh, sense. So the first component of giftedness, um, remember you have to have all three components to be considered gifted um, according to Renzulli. Lots of people have very, uh, uh, might have one component or they might even have two of these components. But to be considered gifted um, according to Renzulli, you have to um, have all three. So the first and most basic um, aspect of giftedness would be above average ability, um, and that's pretty uh, straightforward. You have to perform well, and uh, you have to be showing some evidence that you're doing better than others in a certain area um, to be considered gifted. And I think that's pretty straightforward, and um, that's usually what we see on the surface, like, like the first uh, sign of giftedness when a teacher is going to recommend um, is usually that, based on their grades and their performance. Um, then we get a little bit deeper with the second component, um, and this is where a lot of people might uh, stop in their giftedness, um, and I feel like there's a lot of discrepancies when people are um, recognized as gifted. Um, I feel like sometimes they only have this, and they are completely missing these two components, and we're going to go over those right now. So, the second component um, of giftedness is creativity. So. Also, we see that a lot in gifted students. Um, not all of them, but a lot of them do display creativity, whether it comes to uh, having a creative way of solving a problem or a creative way of um, playing with toys when they're younger. Um, you know, they have a good imagination, and it's, it's, it's remarkable compared to other individuals that are probably their age. Um, all right, so that's also simple, creativity. Now, the last one is where most people miss the mark, um, and a lot of gifted students, in my opinion and in my experience, uh, being a gifted student myself, um, growing up and being around other students who are gifted, I feel like this last one is really important, um, and a lot of people miss the mark on this one, and it's not something that there is a test to, um, to identify students having this trait, and this trait is task commitment. And simply, that's like the passion or the drive to even do well um, and want to do well. Um, and sometimes, you know, gifted students get the bad rep of being um, pretty, uh, like, procrastinators and uh, just being lazy. And I get that, and I see that all the time in myself, and I definitely saw that in myself uh, when I was a child and in school. And a lot of students in school have that problem. And that brings me to the second theory that I feel like should go hand in hand with this, at least in my opinion, and that's Gardner's multiple intelligences. I feel like all of this, at least these two, creativity and task commitment, um, comes from your area of multiple intelligences. I feel like if you're not 
all about math and you don't care about math, you might do well, but you might not be super creative or committed to um, being the best in it because that's not what your area of um, passion is from. It might be an art and you might have creativity, above average ability and task commitment in that area. So that's why I feel like both models um, kind of could go together because Gardner's multiple intelligence give you like nine different areas that you could be gifted in. Um, and I feel like that makes so much sense because as a gifted student in my childhood, I feel like I was not gifted in every single subject. And I feel like when we mark students as gifted, we kind of really put a lot on them to be like, be gifted in everything. Um, and sometimes I feel like that that isn't every student. And they may be really gifted in math, but really bad at reading. Um, but they have gifted tendencies, like they do well, but they don't have that drive that they have for one subject that they have for another. Um, and I feel like there should be more testing on this. Um, I feel like they should do some more studies. Um, and also, Gardner doesn't have a, um, an official test. Um, there is no official test to find out what your multiple intelligence is or what your intelligence level, what area it is in. So I think that it would be really helpful to have a sort of test to help um, identify what you're in, uh, what your intelligence in, is in, and then, then take it from here. Then have another test to decide if you're gifted in that or not based on one of these uh, three components of Renzulli. Um, I also really liked this because it wasn't like um, specific to any certain group of people or culture, which I thought was very important because I felt like a lot of them were, um, at least the ones had, uh, that had studies based off of, um, they did uh, studies on not very diverse groups of people. Um, and I felt like these were very broad and uh, intelligent ideas and I, I again I feel like they two the two of them might go together um, so yes that's that's my presentation <laughs> thank you guys uh, hope that it resonated and uh, made sense thanks